Hello everyone, my name is Amanda Witasik, and I would like to talk about why other fields of study should be integrated into architecture. And I want to encourage audiences to pursue other passions and learn about other fields of study to apply them to architectural design. Now, I'm sure we all remember that very first day of architecture school here at FIU, or at any other university that you began at, and the professor asked us why we chose architecture. And I remember most of us, at least I did, say that it was because we were good at math and we had some sort of creative or architectural background. Or if you had a father or a parent an en who was an engineer or is an engineer and you wanted to pursue an artistic career and then you just had to compromise the architecture just to end the, co the conversation. Um, well, I feel quite embarrassed looking back at that because I think about all of the things that I've learned about architecture in the past three years, the, the analyst possibilities and, and the fact that I've really barely scraped the surface. So architecture, we realize, is not just limited to form and function. While maybe we see ourselves different as other students and uh, professionals working in different fields of study. Um, they are the purpose for our designs. We design for them, we design a space for them to learn, to grow, to collaborate, to expand their ideas, to communicate. And while it might be fun to design for ourselves, uh, we can you know, branch out to other fields of knowledge in order to improve other people's quality of life. Now, um, our goal is to, again, design and build for society to thrive. The world continues to face you know, threats of global warming, discrimination, inequality, uh, an ever-changing blend of cultures and backgrounds, along with a rapid, rapidly growing population. And what we need is to find these innovative design solutions in architecture to address these issues, uh, find the core of the issue, and then use the other fields of knowledge to apply them to figure out the problem and to find a solution. And so we can see examples of how this has been accomplished today and in the past and then envision a, a beautiful world where we can, you know, opportunity lies in our homes, in our cities, and in our environment. Now, again, the reason we need to find an innovative design solution in architecture when we address global issues is, you know, every day we find buildings and just infrastructure around us that is losing purpose or never had a purpose to really begin with. And by purpose, I mean a social purpose, uh, something that, uh, a factor that will help other people in their daily lives. So um, methods in which that designers have been using lately are just outdated and very generic. And with the mindset of occupying a space and making money, which we still want to do, but very generic, uh, now we want to enhance and improve people's quality of life. And so as the global population is exponentially growing, uh, people are becoming less uh, homogenous. We have to consider dis the design as an extension of the user. It's about embracing the chaos rather than forcing people down one line and, and creating some sort of utopia for the world, which is very unrealistic. And so adapting to this change, reversing the societal issues through good intentions and really listening to what people need uh, I find it ironic that when we look up projects on the internet and we find these beautiful drawings, these beautiful renderings that have more people people in them than the actual photography of the design placed in the real world. So we now everything especially has been flipped upside down due to this pandemic. So streets are empty, but now houses are filled inside, outside, a public conversation with someone on the street versus conversation with your ceiling or your dog inside of your home it's all the same thing we need to take all of those factors into consideration now one of the main principles of a project is tying you know a, a design with a story uh, or a specific idea and this again can be referring to outside of architecture uh, an example is biology being applied to architecture um, they might these two fields might be on opposite spectrums but we integrate that scientific field into the design practice. And so this is done through biomimicry. An example is, uh, and it's designed done by the architect Grimshaw and Norman Foster. They use the overlapping technique of fish scales, which are hard but flexible at the same time for the redesign of the Waterloo Station's roof. 
Now, because the hard scales are flexible, but they're hard, it was applied to glass panels on the roof. And it, this station was a train station, so the air pressure changed as trains entered and left the station, but these panels opened and closed and moved according to that air pressure so that the trains could move in more slowly, uh, more smoothly. So again, taking something as simple as the scales of a fish and applying it to a poorly built train station to create an efficient and physically successful structure uh, to help improve a mode of transportation uh, can show that, you know, the possibilities are endless and we use biology, which I mean, I haven't taken a biology class since high school, so maybe I should take another one and see how I can apply it to my designs today. Now, while I made an argument that college does not fully prepare us for the real world, there are some aspects in terms of communication that I feel have benefited us a lot uh, compared to not having, not having had that experience. So we might be excited to graduate and get out there in the real world, but it's brutal. I mean, we don't we really don't know what to expect so even though we're creating these hypothetical situations in our projects we're learning to have dialogue with our peers and mentors this stimulates being able to keep an open mind to think differently from others express ourselves and really break out of our shell which we can't do in the real world i mean we can but to a certain extent because we're restricted by by codes and probably a lot of stubborn people that we'll meet in the real world so this really puts us at a greater advantage uh, to connecting with the world at a deeper level. And again, while tackling these complex societal issues in a more conscientious way, we can find the root of the problem in the built environment, uh, social housing, poor distribution of amenities and clear, clean air in cramped cities, climate change, rising heat levels, uh, a dying heritage that used to be embedded in our urban fabric is now being diminished due to glo globalization. So all of this ties back to subjects and topics that have nothing to do with architecture, yet have everything to do with architecture. And that's why we need to focus our energy on that. In conclusion, while architecture is a career that follows, you know, allows for this creative freedom and expression, are we doing, are we designing for the needs of the people? And while I discuss several issues in architecture and in, on the, in the world, our overarching theme is that there are innovative solutions to global problems and we have the power to change that as long as we do not close ourselves off from possibilities outside of architecture. So I just want you to think about that and I understand that I've become very close with some of you over the past three years um, and some people that I've you know yet to get to know but from what I've noticed we all have a passion uh, that maybe doesn't have to do with architecture maybe has a little bit to do with architecture and now we have the knowledge of architecture in the palm of our hands to fuel us and enhance and, and bring that passion to life. So I know we have the power to create change. Thank you.